fear? What is your worst fear? Is it failure? Is it expressing yourself? Or is it your African parents? Today, we dive into this terrifying emotion. How does it come to be? What causes it? Why does it suck? How does it help? And what to do when it gets overwhelming? Hello parents and friends at home. My name is Kufieyo, the honest weirdo. And I am bringing today fear. People find me quite abrasive. It's one of my most endearing qualities. So welcome to my world. If you're new here, subscribe. If you're a returning subscriber, I love you. <laughs> so how does fear arise? Since this is an emotion, I feel like discussing it from a biological perspective before I go into the external perspective. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I'm being weird today. I guess it's a topic. I have to be in character. In March 2020, the world was gripped by terror, one of proportions we thought was only left for history book, the COVID-19 pandemic. Soon, most minds were filled with fears and concern. Fears about something that they have not cared about in a long time, the lives and health of their friends and family, and also the hygiene of public places. Anybody who has ever gone to a public place knows that nobody fucking cares. Have you seen the toilets? Apart from those fears, people were also scared of losing what they knew as normal. And soon enough, conspiracy theories started to fly around. So where does such a reaction come from? Understanding the biological basis of fear gives us some of the answers. Fear is an intrinsically human emotion. No, actually, it's an intrinsically animal emotion. Stop centering humans. Yeah. So this emotion is designed to protect us from perceived threats. But you already know that, Einstein. What you may not know is the amygdala. The amygdala is an almond-shaped organ seated in our temporal lobe. That is the temple side of the brain. It is responsible for determining the emotional reaction to stimuli and that is where the fear response begins. It works in conjunction with two other parts of the brain. One is the hippocampus also seated in the temporal loop and the other is the prefrontal cortex seated in the frontal loop that is in the forehead side of the brain. So the hippocampus deals with memory while the prefrontal cortex deals with decision making. The prefrontal cortex is part of the cerebrum, which means it is part of like the evolved stuff, like human stuff, like primate stuff, like that kind of stuff, yeah? <laughs> anyway, so the hippocampus is in charge of memory. And if you understand neuroscience like I do, and smarter than you, you would have already started to figure out how they correlate. So, the amygdala is part of what is known as the limbic system. That is part of what is known as the reptilian brain, the ancient brain, the one that the lizards have. Why am I doing things? I'm just acting out. Okay, so the limbic system is in charge of regulating emotions, and that is why the amygdala is involved. It's mostly involved in fear. And when it reacts to the stimuli, it now goes to the hippocampus, which is close by in the temporal loop. And what the hippocampus does is to like compare that stimuli with what is in the memory. I told you memory. And if it correlates with something you should be afraid of, it goes to the frontal loop and reaches the prefrontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex tells us, oh, hey, no, it's not that deep actually. Just, okay, calm down. Don't be a drama queen or run. So you get the picture, but I think you should do your research because um, I'm just using sense to understand how this shit works. I did not actually read it up. I know those parts are involved, but I did not read the actual way they are involved. But I know, I know in neuroscience, so believe me at your own risk. Uh. <laughs> so the amygdala's role is in the like um, the um. I'm getting tired of this biology. Oh. It triggers the autonomic nervous system. Uh, this part of the nervous system has the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is in charge of the adrenal gland. Oh my God, I'm going to the field of shit I don't really know. 
but I'm going to continue. I'm a medical student, so I have the right to pour purulent stuff if I want to. If you like, don't go and read up. Anyway, so the adrenal gland secretes adrenaline, which causes some of the symptoms of fear, like fast breathing, quick heartbeats, sweating, and queasiness in the stomach. You know about the fight and fight response, right? That's what adrenaline does. Enough of that. Enough. I was getting scared a little myself. So let's move on to something less biological. Why does fear arise? And like in English. So fear is incredibly complex. Fear can be from evolutionary fears. Like I think almost all human beings are afraid of snakes, fire, and some other kind of things. Most animals are afraid of fire. So you know that that part is um, evolutionary. Then there are others like being afraid of Nigerian men that is environmental. So you learn some from past traumas and associations like let me see what what could you be afraid of crossing the road crossing the road without looking you know that you are going to get hit that is an association past traumas in nigeria men okay so what are like the specific causes of fear number one on my list is african parents obviously <laughs> and examinations obviously they make people scared. You're crushing you, trying new things, supper, and much more. Basically, what I'm saying is that fear can be from a specific object like snakes and spiders in Nigerian police force, and it can also be from environmental causes like being posted to the north for your NYSC. Well, obviously, you made the effort to be redeployed from Zafara back down to the south, back down to where you're sure that nobody will use you for religious fantasies. Am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? Ugh. What fear does is that it heightens our senses and that keeps us alert and ready to make plans and prepare for impending doom as you should since you live in nigeria nigeria is so fucking scary man like i'm so scared that someone will put on their agenda and fuck up my sound oh aside from that kind of like runaway or fight fear there's also this kind of fear the fear that um has more to do with like our ambitions the fear that tells you that highlights where you are right now and where you want to be the fear that tells you um you can't do it and that same kind of fear can also prompt you to examine where you are right now and say, oh wow, I really need to do some shit to get my life in order. My exam is in the next two weeks and I haven't read. We have 100 and something topics and I'm screwed. <sighs> fear is also the reason why you will not take that chance with that crush that is way above your day. Because... <laughs> get an ew obviously stay away from her don't be weird know your limits so basically what i'm trying to say is that it stops us from being stupid it does it also stops us from self-sabotaging well like everything else fear has its other side where it makes us to be stupid and actually causes us to self-sabotage like it makes us not to ask that our crush that could actually be a great partner and would actually say yes and would even pay for the date in that expensive restaurant where we have always wanted to go anyway back to reality so last year my brother and i started a youtube channel called abaz views the world so if from the name alone you can already see that it was mostly my brother's work i really enjoyed working with him on that project but I didn't really have so much creative freedom because primarily it was his own and so after a while we stopped really shooting video stuff because he used to travel and i used to travel and our schedules used to clash and i started wondering why don't i start my own channel i think i will be good at it but then something told me not to fear fear that envious little bitch told me not to start this channel but here i am today i won um, obviously it's not the i'm being chased by a lion kind of fear it's the insidious type the one that locks in the shadows and whispers in your ear don't do that you are not good enough you are going to fail you are going to lose money and you're going to look like a fool in front of your 20 subscribers like share and subscribe Ooh.
this kind of fear doesn't just screw you over when it comes to career and creating your ambition it's everywhere it's every fucking way and it's hard to perceive because you, you can call it being cautious and sometimes it is being cautious but how can you tell when it is overwhelming well for millennia human beings have actually had to deal with serious shit like being chased by a lion actually like like do you know anybody that has been chased by a lion i personally do link in the description there's nothing there, don't mind me. But you can check out my Instagram. So, we rarely face those kind of fears in the modern world, but what we have instead is bills, being born in Nigeria, Nigeria police force, bandits, ungone known men, being kidnapped, um, being raped, being card called, so many other things, you know, simple stuff. Despite this obvious peace and tranquility we have these days our minds still work like they did thousands of years ago and that means we overreact to a lot of things yet with this kind of fears you can't literally run away or physically attack them sometimes these fears get so overwhelming that they actually constitute what is known medically as anxiety disorders that is social anxiety panic attacks that is panic disorder generalized anxiety disorders um, obsessive compulsive disorder and phobias but you don't have any of that right <laughs> so what can you do about fear one you have to face it face it it's not going anywhere so why not just face it and that is the solution but you might be saying okay i knew that but i can't face it because i'm a fucking coward well put this in perspective if you don't address that issue right now look at it in the long term will it get worse is addressing it now not going to be less scary than the end effect if you leave it to fester i'm just asking you to think about it Change your mindset by becoming a nihilist like me. When you realize that nothing is that deep, you start to not care so much. And when you don't care so much, you stop being so afraid. I know that it's not easy to just think that nothing matters. But if you're not some kind of religious nut job, I think by now you should have realized that the worst that can happen is death. Or, or, or having your fingers cut off, being choked by a plastic bag, being burnt with a slow fire solitary confinement is not that deep watching your children die is not that deep so go for it another thing you can do is just relax 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 come on it's me breathing and out do it with me i'm serious let's breathe in and out three deep breaths you hold in between breaths like you hold in between breathing in and breathing out for like a second. So let's start. Breathe in. Out. So now that you've got the hang of it, three deep breaths, okay? Hasn't it calmed your mind? Well, that is because the body and the mind are linked. So if you relax the body, you relax the mind. So why don't you try stuff like yoga, meditation, and you can get your significant other, or you can pay, or you can get a friend to massage you, because that shit is beautiful. So that's it for today on Kofi Ayo, the honest weirdo. I hope I wasn't too strange on this one. I feel like I was doing a lot. But like I said, I'm not that afraid to express myself. And I hope that it turned out well. Did you enjoy it? Tell me in the comments. And remember to like this video. Even if you don't like it, like this video, okay? Be very afraid. And remember to subscribe to my channel because you get more videos like this. Share it to someone who might enjoy it too. 
don't make me beg share this video i'm trying to reach my audience even if you don't like it share it share the fucking video okay so bye